Uh, a little bit, not massively amount. Um, I know about some of them, only sort of small amounts, but not in massive detail or why they're there, to be honest. No, no, I don't, no. Not an awful lot. No, like the one over Bradford, uh, and uh, they did mushrooms, and uh, obviously down Wookie and all around there. Do you know about the Caves of Mines in Wiltshire and Somerset? No, I don't. Not really, no. I know there's some in Bath and uh, some out at Monkton Farley's or Farley Hungerford or one of those ones. And they have some at Caution, of course, yeah. So we're currently at Monkton Farley Ammunition Depot, which was decommissioned in 1965 and sold off in 1976. After passing through the hands of several different owners, uh, Moncton Farley Mine was almost destroyed by theft and vandalism. So we're now going to have a look inside and see what we can uncover. So uh, this, this place is, is pretty creepy, to be honest. Um, very abundant. There's lots of graffiti everywhere. And uh, it's like some weird boiler, and it's, yeah, it's pretty eerie. <laughs> oh, that's weird, that's really weird. Oh, God, it's in there. It's just weird. It's quite possibly the strangest place I've ever been in my life. Well, Stone's been quite at Monkton Farley probably since Roman times. There's a Roman villa down in the valley, but the underground quarrying probably started round about 1830 and uh, continued for about 100 years. So by 1930, the stone reserves were beginning to run out, the stone was becoming more expensive for industry, all sorts of reasons made it um, uneconomic to extract stone from underground anymore. But at just about at that time, um, it looked like there was trouble brew, brew, brewing in Europe and we were going to have an, another war with Germany and the war office was looking for underground storage space with the vast reserves of ammunition it was building up um, for, in preparation for that war and well their eyes lighted on the quarries at Moncton Farley which were more or less disused the owners Bath and Portland Stone Company were desperate to make some money out of what was then a wasting asset so the ownership was transferred to the to the war office. One of the things that's worth remembering about all of the mines and quarries in North Wiltshire, and there's about a thousand acres of them, is that although um, they'd quarrying had more or less come to an end by 1930, um, the, the industry continued in a small way right up to the beginning of the Second World War. And then suddenly, like one day, the, the, rec the War Office requisitioning officer comes along and all of the quarries are requisitioned by the, from the Bath and Portland Stone Company. So quarrying stops, the end of the industry stops overnight. Although we're not in Wiltshire or Somerset, we're currently in Bristol being given a guided tour of the Redcliffe Caves. I've been giving guided tours now for 18 years and I've done a load of research about them. Uh, Funnily enough, no caves. They were all dug out by man. Pick, shovel and wheelbarrow, probably between the years 1650 to 1750, to make glass. They crushed the sand, mixed it with minerals and made it into glass. But the caves go back to 1346, when a hermit sat in part of the caves and prayed for the Berkeley family of Gloucestershire. What got you interested in mining and caving? Well, it's qu quite funny. Uh, you, we talked about it earlier, briefly. I was an apprentice at Copenhagen, and Copenhagen as an underground facility, then for the Ministry of Defence to store goods. And one of the guys who was an apprentice with me, he said, I've been caving before, would you like to go? And I went, and that was something like 45 years ago, and I enjoyed it. It was a very strange experience, the darkness and the strange noises and the water. Um, but 45 years later I'm still doing it, still investigating the history, writing about caving uh, and digging because when the glaciers left the country there were massive uh, rivers generated with the ice melting and they washed silt into existing caves. So we dig the silt out and try and find new caves. We're currently in Swan Mine, located in Kingsdown. Kingsdown was a less important working. 
it was not viable to lay down trolley roads and the stone was carried away by horse-drawn wagons and carts. The last newcomer to dig stone in Kingsdown Quarry was A. W. Angel of Bathford from 1921 to 1926. I find it weird that this whole underground world is below people's feet and some people may not even know it exists. Oh, right, you really need to take it. Go on, you got it? Yeah. <laughs> what do I need to do? <laughs> oh, my head. We thought we were here. But we're actually here. We're going over to Caution to speak to Howard and Paul about their experiences underground. So what's your first experience of going underground? In 1970, I had a job working for an agricultural contractor who cut all the grass above ground around the caution sites. And in inclement weather, well, we did anything. We broke up pillboxes, we knocked walls down, built walls, cut trees down. Basically, any job that the MOD required us to do. And then it went to a contract on the underground. And that was to clear out Moncton Farley. It was the old BFPO and it was uh, one area of Moncton Farley and we used to go down and our job was to clear out all the wooden racking, all the brass keys, bring it to the surface and dispose of it basically by burning it all. So do you still have an interest in the underground? Oh very much so. Uh, there's a local author called Nick McCamley, I've got all his books all about the underground and as I can't get back on the underground to these sites, these books are important because they bring back a huge amount of memories for me because I've worked in most of the quarries because again in 1977 I took on a job as a quarry cheater which meant I had access to all the quarries that had um, an asbestos suspended ceiling so that, that was my job for quite a while as well. What's about your interest in the underground? Basically over 10 years ago now me and a bunch of uh, friends went up to uh, Sally in the Woods which back in the day was a ammunition depot for the military. We started wandering around, started sort of seeing things and finding things and just got hooked from there then really. So do you have any advice for people that want to explore these places? Definitely. To start with you, you need some pretty good uh, lights. Don't go down with some poxy little torch you walk from the pound shop because you can't see nothing down there. As soon as you go down there like I do with people when I take people down, I say switch your torch off, you can't see a hand in front of your face. Now you imagine you're somewhere you, you're not used to, it's pitch black and your lights go dead. How are you going to get out? You need the right sort of protective clothing. You know, most people wear overalls or myself I wear um, military waterproofs. Um, also some boots or some wellies, um, a hard hat um, and normally I take some gloves because you never know if you fall over whatever, what's on the floor, there can be broken glass, there's lots of old rusty metal lying around so you can always cut yourself. So, but my main thing is you always must, and I mean this, must go down with someone that knows where they're going. It doesn't matter if it's a small mine or a big mine, things can happen and you can get lost. But always remember to tell somebody who's not going where you're going and say what time you're going down, what time you're coming out and to contact them after you've got out because if you're in somewhere nobody knows where you've gone that's it mate no, nobody knows where you are so just be careful and always go with somebody that knows what they're doing and been there before.